Hi and welcome everyone. We are live from New York at the Wiki World Fair at the Queen's Museum. Uh, my name is Michael Hegstrom. I have Andrew with me and uh, I am the founder and editor-in-chief at Wiki Journal, which I'm going to first give a brief introduction to. So Wiki Journal, this is a group of scholarly diamond open access journals, and it is currently hosted in Wikiversity. So the main features of Wikijournal is that uh, these are open access, so all published articles are openly accessible under the Creative Commons license, it is free to publish, so uh, these are uh, fully non-profit journals run by volunteer editors, so there are no publication charges of any kind. And it also uh, applies uh, public peer review. So each article that is submitted is, uh, uh, has a peer review, but at least two experts in the topic before publication. And it is Wikipedia integrated. So appropriate material is integrated into Wikipedia or other sister projects. And um, so uh, the purpose of this is uh, to overcome some of Wikipedia's limitations. So for instance, there's often missing information as seen in studies that, for example, pharmaceutical uh, coverage of articles compared to drug formularies. And in many cases, it has uh, inconsistent quality and it is always changing. And also researchers they may want more credit for the work, more so than being mentioned in the history tab. And there's also, uh, in particular, a shortage of images. So because you cannot simply use any image on the internet due to copyright. So the different publications format of Wikijournal is that you can submit one of uh, research, uh, and in particular, original research. and. As most of you know, this is not welcome directly in Wikipedia, but in Wikijournal it is possible. So the topics could be in medicine, in science, or humanities. And such papers should preferably follow the standard format of introduction, method, results, and discussion. And they could also be in the category of case studies, which are descriptions of significant events, decisions, projects or policies. And there's also the review format, which could be focused. And these reviews can focus on a specific detail um, of a topic or more encyclopedic, which kind of looks more like a Wikipedia article. And these broad summaries cover an entire topic. And it is possible to submit a Wikipedia article into these um, Wiki journals too, as I can show later too. And um, a submission can basically be an image too, and uh, together with short review centered around the image with a description of it. So um, basically a Wiki journal's publishing flow is that an article is first written and submitted as a preprint. And after that, it undergoes peer reviews, at least to expert in the field. And after that step, it's um, uh, going to one of the editorial boards. And if they approved, it will be published. And once it's published, we'll create a PDF version. Uh, and there will also be a version in um, the wiki of Wikijournal. And uh, so these versions are citable and they are stable and also um, there's Wikipedia integration of content whenever appropriate. So, and this part is highly accessed, uh, for example, with some of the images that have been able to uh, be integrated in multiple articles. We've seen, in one case, uh, over 250,000 views per month of uh, these images. So, compared to um, standard uh, traditional scholarly journals, the um, the amount of viewers can be really immense. And so broad readership and there, um, and it is still, a, this content is also editable and updatable as uh, new 
research may appear in time as well. And um, there's also the option to start making updates in Wikipedia. So to improve an article and after the improvement you submitted through this uh, publication flow and then uh, you basically uh, improve a particular Wikipedia page through this process and get it peer reviewed and you can get uh, a mention as an author of a scholarly work. So, um, so there are many ways of getting involved. So there are uh, basically uh, there's a wiki journal of medicine, um, and there's a wiki journal of science, which can include topics such as uh, also mathematics, engineering, technology, and there's a wiki journal of humanities, which also includes arts, social sciences, and uh, we're also in the development of hopefully getting. Uh, journal up to in psychology, psychiatry, and behavioral sciences. These are uh, the websites of each of these journals. And uh, in particular right now, I'd say if you want to help out, there's uh, the role of associate editor, where you would help in contacting peer reviewers and coordinate the publication process of articles. Or it can be an author of an article or you can even submit content you've previously written in Wikipedia. And I should also mention that you do not have to be a doctor or a certain degree in order to submit something. Well, um, each article will still have to undergo peer review uh, by experts, but that's something uh, that's separate. And you can also follow the project on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn under these uh, tags. So I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Andrew Long. I am uh, the managing editor for Wiki Journal of Science. So uh, what we do basically is whenever uh, we receive a submission, what we do is we would just to verify to make sure that it is of, like, of a reasonable acceptable quality, whether it's a preprint or as an exist, existing like a Wikipedia article. Obviously, if someone submits like a stub or like a start class article, the chances are it's not well referenced. Uh, it's not, it doesn't have sufficient coverage on the information. So, uh, so we would not, uh, we would reject that. Uh, but if it appears to be, uh, to, it appears to be sufficient enough, then we would, we would, we would send the, uh, we would identify uh, scholars that are subject matter experts in the field, and we would uh, and we would solicit at least two uh, replied uh, comments, and then we actually have those published on the talk pages so that it is available to everyone and anyone to read. Uh, because in uh, in a lot of the scholarly journals, uh, these kind of comments are not shown at all. It's only exists be only the editors themselves or the authors know what the comments are. So we're actually trying to bring uh, transparency into, into the system because we have heard of cases where uh, people, uh, peer reviewers can be quite toxic or leaving uh, racist or sexist remarks uh, in, in, those, in those comments. So we believe that this is one of the way that it encourages open science, but also reducing the toxicity uh, in the reviewing field as well because it serves notice that your comment is going to be shown uh, and, and anyone could see it. So that way uh, we could kind of uh, lower down the, the, the uh, we could kind of reduce that kind of toxic behavior in the, in both the science as well as on the, in the Wiki community. And based on, uh, once we got that, we would contact the offers and they would, uh, uh, based on the, the, the comments, the offers will take a look and review or they have the chance to rebut if they think that the, uh, the reviewers, uh, do, uh, the comments do, do not make sense. Uh, and then after that, the, uh, the editorial board will, will examine the, the article and whether to decide to accept or to reject the publication. And basically what, um, uh, Michael has shown is that we will integrate these uh, changes back into Wikipedia or also in other venues such as in, uh, in comments for images or sound recordings so that so that it brings improvement back into Wikipedia and not just as like a standalone article uh, but we do generate a PDF which gives like a snapshot 
because uh, one of the concerns for a lot of academics is you cannot really cite a specific Wikipedia article because it's always constantly changing and there is no stable version. So when, we, when, when, it's, uh, when the article is accepted, we will generate a PDF which will give a persistent citable version that academias uh, could use on their CV for, their, for the uh, performance evaluation. And that way it, it kind of gets around the I cannot, I, I, I don't want to cite by the edit, uh, edit version ID. Uh, so yeah, so that, uh, and then we will also submit these uh, uh, information onto the relevant uh, search engines so that they could also be crawled. And we have, uh, we have articles that were, uh, that are used quite, quite a lot. And what we found is that the image galleries turns out to be actually one of the highest citations rates of, uh, of uh, from other peer review uh, publications, so which demonstrated that there is a there is a big need for uh, for uh, for 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 high quality uh, images that are published in not in not in like copyrighted format. It could be like in Creative Commons format, uh, and we and we do see that for, uh, across multiple uh, medical image galleries that they are used quite frequently. And and that and and this is one of the demand. Uh, this is this is we identified this as one of the high higher need areas uh, in the publish uh, in the publishing field because this is this this kind of like uh, demand is not really met by any existing uh, publications available. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sanam, do you have any uh, particular questions regarding this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe just repeat it after I ask the microphone. Um, what kind of feedback are you getting? I mean, so a wiki journal seems like it, the big question would be getting buy-in from the rest of academia. What sort of feedback are you getting from you know, peers in the field about a, a wiki journal? Yeah, I think a lot of positive. Yeah, so the question is so what kind of a... Uh, feedback are we getting from the academic field of uh, doing this? And I think uh, uh, basically I started positive feedback of it because people, uh, I think every researcher appreciate that we are, um, we do not um, have any cost to publish. We do not require um, any uh, cost to access it. So, uh, and I think everybody thinks it's a really great idea. Yeah, I could try to take that question as well. Uh, it costs, if you're trying to publish an open access journal in say nature or science, those cost upwards of even $2,000 or even more US dollars uh, per article, uh, which is a lot even in, uh, in developed countries. And when you're looking at ac academics in developing countries or in the global south, that could be like a quarter of their of the annual income because of the of very little stipend. They could, in theory, ask for like a fee waiver or fee reduction, but that's also another another pro another process, more paperwork, and they have to and they have to submit uh, uh, all sorts of form just to get that, that kind of reduction. Uh, the fact that our journal is completely free to for submission and free to publish completely eliminates this kind of paperwork. So we so there's no need for someone to try to beg and ask for a, like a free reduction just to just to be open access. And moreover, uh, it we also we we don't have to have any embargo of any information which is like a green open access journals because it, the article is immediately readily available the the day that it is accepted, right? So. Uh, and that and and that and that is one of the one of the struggles for a lot of the uh, researchers because they because there is a constant push in the past five or five to ten years of trying to get into the open uh, to publish more into open access. Uh, the, uh, the existing uh, publishing houses like Springer, Nature, uh, Wiley, Blackwell, uh, Taylor and Francis, they they adopt this. They, they, they start to do the open access, but what they do is they only go for go, go open access and they charge a thousand dollars, two thousand US dollars uh, for, for these application articles. And when academics are expected to publish, say like three to four papers a year, that, that could that could be that, that eats up a lot of their uh, a lot of the funds and uh, and simply it's not sustainable. Yeah, and to clarify too them. Definition of diamond open access is basically you know, it's free to read and it's uh, free to publish, and uh, compared to other ways that 
we call it you know, like gold open access, which uh, as I understand when uh, you still have to, authors have to pay to uh, have their articles published. And moreover, uh, you could, uh, we actually have uh, articles that were uh, do, do language published, meaning that, uh, the, uh, for example, the, it was actually an article about uh, in, in Nepal uh, that it published in Wiki Journal of Science. And what we did, it, we, we published one English version, and at the same time, because the authors are Nepalese, so they actually write, written up this, uh, the same version and translated in, uh, from English into Nepalese so that it's, al it's also published at the same time such that the developing countries could also access these information readily available in their native language, which also uh, foster our, uh, our reach to uh, reach those that are uh, less proficient or not, or not proficient in English language. One of the uh, one of the interesting products of, of WikiJournal is a lot of peer-reviewed wor work on Wikipedia articles themselves, and and improving Wikipedia articles to the next level. Um, I wonder if you've 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 thought of the old idea of a Wikipedia 1.0 and building a sort of a full peer-reviewed um, encyclopedia in that way. And if you know you're taking some steps in that direction, or you're looking at like what might maybe small might mini publications of or slices of Wikipedia that might be heavily reviewed that you're uh, working on publishing and and how you might see integrating uh, with that further. Thank you. Yes, so we definitely want to target those that are, say, uh, at the feature article and also good article status, because that means it has already gone through uh, some form of a peer review process on Wikipedia. Uh, but uh, we want to recognize that it focuses a lot on, say, manual of style and such, whereas uh, maybe not so much on the, about the content or the, or the depth of the article itself. Uh, Whereas when we send it out to peer reviewers, they would actually go into the depth and actually see whether the whether the information is still uh, is still up to date. As an example, uh, we had a submission from several years ago uh, for uh, for it is a it was a good article uh, on surface tension, uh, which is like a chemical property. And we when we sent it to uh, two peer reviewers, they actually uh, they actually identify a number of inaccuracies or outdated information that uh, that basically that the school of thought is no longer uh, it's no longer correct but it was uh, present in the Wikipedia article and we were actually able to uh, when, when we when we put the article up to for a good article review to see if it still merits having the good article status it was later determined that those were accurate and the article itself was delisted from the good article status due to the, those concerns raised by the expert peer reviewers so I think that in in one way even if a, an article gets rejected from our publication, it ultimately also benefits the Wikipedia by identifying and actually having some kind of published record of showing the deficiency of that article at that point, uh, at the point of when they were uh, reviewed. Yeah, and I think that's a good demonstration of uh, the benefits of a Wikijournal because in, in a way, I think you, Wikijournal is basically a platform that is, uh, you can tell you, say it's somewhere in between uh, Wikipedia and the traditional academic journal, which I think uh, many researchers and scholars would be more comfortable uh, in using than either separately. Yes. Can you say that? Yeah. 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 No, no. For example, one feature article where one of the things that was emphasized during the review was making it understandable for a non-expert, which at first impression seems to be at odds with the way academic journals. Sorry, we couldn't hear you. It's really echoey. Could you just perhaps just go, yeah. Thank you. Let's see. You could just pause. So one thing I noticed, for instance, is that in a featured article I wrote about a rather technical subject. A lot of the focus during the featured article candidacy was on making it understandable to non-experts, which at first glance seems to be at odds with the way a lot of academic journals are published. How does the wiki journal take that into consideration? I guess, uh, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. So the question is, the, um, the, you've experienced that um, when uh, bringing uh, an article to feature article status in w Wikipedia, a lot of the effort was to making 
it more readable to the general audience rather than technical. And if we are using that in a wiki journal, um, if I understand correctly. Um, so there may be articles that may be very technical, but I think a solution here is that once you want to integrate that material in Wikipedia, you can rephrase it and make it more um, more understandable in that process. Uh, for instance, if you submit a review article to Wikijournal, it may be technical, but the, and the, but the peer reviewers may be comfortable with that, and it may may still be technical at the publication, but then. If it, the sources of that review article are proper, you can uh, copy that over to the Wikipedia article of that uh, topic using those proper references. And uh, in that, when you copy it over, you can also rephrase it, uh, maybe even put it on a simple English Wikipedia uh, pages as well. Yes, and we are actually in the process of also working like a like a layman kind of summary, so that uh, so that it's uh, more easily understandable by uh, audiences that are not in that subject area. So this is actually one of the work that is uh, that we are working on, and we could we because it's a wiki wiki format, it's very easy to add just like a, another section below the abstract for like a for like a quick summary or like a or like a, in a in a simplified format to explain. The, the the technical details or some or or the overall findings for uh, for for the non uh, for the non 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 subject matter group. Yeah. Yes. So to follow up on your comment before about um, open comments from reviewers, isn't there a fear about the reverse case of uh, reviewers not being harsh enough if they know that you know their comments will last forever on the record? Um, you can certainly imagine a case of some harsh commentary that that's defended and you know successfully you know. But it seems that bad uh, articles would be a risk as well too. So does that take into account? Yes. So uh, in our review, uh, in, in our review process, the uh, the reviewer ch could choose to have the identity known and published, or they could also choose to have the identity to be uh, anonymous. So in a way, if they if they want if they if they want to do a review without worrying that it could upset peers in the field, then they certainly have the option of choosing to re to, to publish the, the comments anonymously. So we would actually, when we, uh, we actually have uh, technical editors who will uh, post these comments on uh, on behalf of the of the actual reviewers. So in a way, it kind of like have a, like a little bit of a firewall to ensure that the, anem uh, the anonymity, uh, the, the, the identity of the reviewers uh, if they choose to chose to be choose to be anonymous, then they then they could stay anonymous that way. But I, in 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 our cases, what we found is that about eighty percent of the reviewers actually choose to have the identity to be uh, to be published, and it's also it's also it also works in their favor because uh, part of their. Uh, University evaluation is not just on the publication itself. It's also doing like scholarly work in their own fields. One of that includes reviewing other people's other other peers' publication. And uh, when you have when you have make yourself uh, identity known, then it's also f very easy for uh, to show to your university board during the annual review that you have reviewed for so and so article when when basically. It's very easy identifiable. It's not locked behind some uh, like uh, pr uh, like co confidential uh, databases from those uh, proprietary journals that that the, the university could only take your word for it for. Yeah. Yeah, and I could, I could also mention some recent updates. Yes, so currently, um, Wikijournal um, they receive a very um, uh, very useful uh, grant from Wikimedia Foundation, so we've been able to uh, contract a few tech editors to um, do technical and repetitive work so that um, those uh, volunteers who join editorial boards or uh, coordinate peer reviews in, in other ways um, can more focus on 
what is uh, within their expertise, uh, what they find interesting. And yes, uh, so we are especially uh, look, uh, seeking for uh, individuals that are in the humanities area to become like an associate editor or the editor to booster our, because humanities cover multiple subject areas and, they, and a lot of them are quite wide from like history to music to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to say social sciences and maybe even a little bit of like geography and, po and politics. So we're uh, always, uh, we're always looking for uh, additional, uh, uh, additional volunteers uh, who will be further uh, uh, advance our goal of, uh, of, of providing, uh, providing free knowledge to everybody. And, uh, and other journals, we're, uh, we're, and all, at all our journals, we're always looking for uh, new submissions uh, s submitted by, uh, by you guys and also like, and, and also uh, in academia. So we're, so we're accepting as, as, uh, submissions from all of our journals. And what what is some what is one one of our plan in the future when uh, when we want to when we want to uh, move down the path? Yeah. So eventually, uh, a goal is to become a separate sister project of uh, Wikimedia. So currently, the whole uh, project is hosted in Wikiversity. But do we also feel that um, if we would be a separate uh, wiki, that would make it uh, more easily to navigate between the articles and. Uh, uh, would simplify a lot of the processes. Um, we still got some uh, formal work to do in, uh, in this regard, but uh, that's something we hope for in the future. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to have our start our series of lightning talks. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We're going to have a series of lightning talks at the Wiki World's Fair, and uh, user Lego KTM is going to give it first. Hello. Hi. Am I good? No. Okay. This is fine. Start. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Lego KTM and uh, also Kunal. Um, I'm talk gonna talk about the mailman mailing list migration we did last year. Uh, so if you're not familiar, at lists.wikimedia.org, we host a bunch of mailing lists that are you know, for different projects, different groups in the movement. The largest mailing list is Wikimedia L, which is like the list for the entire movement. And there are also like other lists like daily article, you get the daily featured article or the daily uh, daily image, which is the fe every feature, each day's featured picture on Commons. Um, we have about 500 mailing lists, and Mailman is actually the single longest piece of software the movement has used. Uh, Mailman was originally used by Newpedia, and it predates MediaWiki, um, so it really is like one of the, the longest thing we've used. Um, and up until mid last year, when we did the migration, we used uh, version two of the software, and it was pretty bad. Um, it had like no mobile support. Uh, the archives were very inflexible. There was like no search. But then it like we also had to block Google from indexing it because uh, it wasn't powerful enough to handle you know being scraped and everything. It would regularly go down. It had very bad security practices. Your passwords were stored in plain text, so anyone with server access could actually see your real password. Um, and there was like no real database for storage, which meant that if someone sent something like bad to a mailing list. We couldn't actually redact it um, because if you removed an email, it would mess up all of the links. Like, because literally the storage was an HTML file. So it, it, it was pretty bad. Um, and so then Mailman 3, came, even the Mailman developers realized that it was bad. And so they worked on version 3, which is mostly a ground up rewrite of the software. Um, and people, and finally, um, we started working on migrating, you know, mailing lists, and we decided we would do it in, in batches. We would, like, you know, like segmented them based on the size and how big their archives were. Um, and I want to shout out Amir, aka Lads Group, who was like really the first person to get started, and then he roped me into this project. And there were a lot of volunteers and staff members throughout the whole thing that, you know, helped with testing and debugging throughout the process. Um, 
And you know, as we started the migration process, we also started looking closely at Mailman 2 for like the first time in years. No one had really, it just kind of like existed. No one really paid attention to it. And we discovered that um, for mailing lists that were set not to keep an archive, and these are sensitive mailing lists like the board's mailing list, the legal mailing list, the LGBT users mailing list, they were all set to not keep archives. And it turns out that Mailman was keeping archives. And even the fact that these were private lists, anyone who could guess the URL could actually view the archives. And up to the point of, you know, you could go back to like 2007 that these archives that were not supposed to be saved had been saved by the software, even though we had explicitly told it not to. And so then, you know, we spent like a few days like deleting all of these files that should have never existed in the first place. Big, big oops. Um, <laughs> Then we started migrating over to uh, Mailman 3, and we learned that, you know, like the, the database software used is called MariaDB. We learned that no one had actually run Mailman 3 at our scale, like at any scale on MariaDB because we just kept hitting all these bugs that were like the most basic issues. So the biggest one that we ran into was if you had an emoji in your username, the migration would fail, like the database layer was set to the wrong encoding, so it would reject anyone with a um, emoji. And the problem was, was that in flight, it would migrate enough of the mailing list that we would think that you had moved over to the new version, except that it hadn't, and someone managed to send an email in the process of it breaking, and their email was like disappeared into cyberspace. Uh, so, and, but um, you know, we were able to work pretty well with the upstream in getting this fixed. Um, they're very receptive and very happy that we were actually testing it and using it. Um, this was around the same time we discovered a security bug in Mailman 3, in which that when you were migrating a private list, the archives would be public up until the migration, the import finished, and then they would become private. And for most people, that like actually isn't that big of a deal because typically you would like migrate all of your lists over and then you would announce it to your users, hey, we've moved over to this new thing. Except that's not how we do it. We would say on IRC, hey, we're migrating this list over, you know, like it's it's starting now and that way everyone like knows what we're doing. And sure enough, people like, huh, how come I can read the archives? I'm not supposed to be able to. And then that was another thing we like, we worked with the developers to get fixed and, you know, reported as a security issue. Um, and uh, lastly, like, you know, like, Mailman 3 is, is better than Mailman 2, but it also has a decent amount of issues. There are, like, a lot of, like, unresolved problems or just weird UI issues. Like, it's actually hard for people to unsubscribe. It's very easy to subscribe, but hard to unsubscribe. Um, and they're just, like, an assortment of issues that people have filed bugs for that we're, like, slowly working on and have reported upstream. Uh, the one thing I do want to note is that um, the Wikimedia Foundation funded a security audit for the Mailman 3 software last month, or over the past few months, but we got the results last month. Um, and it was actually a, a really good thing and a great way for us to contribute back to the Mailman project and, uh, you know, uh, for them. We f they found one, like, critical security issue that has, was actually not even a Mailman issue. It was an issue in one of the dependencies we used that had fixed the issue and they just didn't bother telling anyone, hey, we fixed a security issue, you should update. So once we realized that, you know, uh, you know, it got fixed, it got reported, and then like Debian and Fedora and all these other projects, you know, accepted it as a security update. So everyone else who has been having this issue has also also been patched. Um, and there's still like a few like issues that haven't been disclosed, but uh, yeah, we're working on it and happy emailing. <laughs> Next lighting talk coming up momentarily. Hi. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to do the, we're, we're going to Will right now, but we're going to come back. Hold on. 
Can you? I'll even share this. Yeah, that's great. That's all in these people behind me. Oh, it's not behind me. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, I'll, ju I'll jump in right now. All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to give a quick lightning talk on the Environment of New York City Task Force. Uh, if you're interested in the environment, if you're interested in New York City, this might be a task force that interests you. This is a task force that's under the Wiki Project 2020 uh, with an Earth Day event at Shurican, which is a redemption center in Bushwick, Brooklyn. And we started doing these Earth Day themed edit-a-thons during the pandemic, so we did them online. And in this process, we started developing these work lists. And as the work list started getting longer and longer, I thought this seems more than just a once a year event. Maybe this would be worthy of pushing into a task force. So I took these work lists and uh, created the environment of New York City task force. and Wikimedia Commons. The environment of New York City Task Force is supported and run by the local chapters of Wikipedia editors. So just recently, in June, we had an event at the Bronx Botanical Gardens. This is the New York Botanical Gardens. They have a very large, grand library. And this was a th environment of the Bronx themed event where we focus on environmental issues of the Bronx. The library pulled materials related to the Bronx forest, which we were able to use in our editing. And this was a really exciting event. And this was the first time we moved the uh, task force out of Brooklyn. So now we've done an event in the Bronx. And looking forward, I hope to push this task force to all five boroughs. So if anyone wants to collaborate in any environmentally themed editing in any of the five boroughs, let me know. We have a tentative upcoming event in Brooklyn in early September. And uh, if you look at these page views, popular articles that we've written, you can see, I'm, you're not gonna be able to see in this room here, but Ryan has it up for the viewers online. One of our most popular articles, New York City Waste Management System. This is a really great article on New York City waste management. It's had over a thousand views this year. Thane Family Forest is one of the oldest growth forests in New York City. That's at the Bronx Botanical Gardens. We've had the Sunset Park Material Recovery Facility article written, which is a really interesting um, material recovery facility written by rhododendrites here. I really recommend it. We've had an article written on canner, which is the occupation of people that come and pick up cans and return them for redemption. And we've had articles written on community gardens. So uh, we'll put a link of this into the uh, meetup page. But yeah, this is my quick lightning talk about the environment of New York City Task Force. Uh, you can follow our meetup page and we'll be posting updates. 
a long list of tasks and other topics that need articles. Uh, so take a look, and thanks for your time. I think it's the microphone as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> We have been volunteered for a lightning talk. <laughs> and and we're, we're from LaGuardia Community College. My name is Anne Mitsuchi. I'm a librarian. And this is Jimena, uh, Dr. X, for my students. And we have been collaborating for years now on translatathons. So we want to tell you a little bit about them, how they work, and uh, why we're not doing them right now. So Jimena teaches English. She teaches English 101. And we're, we're always teaching together. Uh, with, uh, with Wikipedia, we've done this for many years. And since 2017, we've been doing translate-a-thon events, you know, once a year, where we, where we invite everybody from our college and everyone- uh, In the community? In the, in the community uh, to uh, translate. So it's kind of like a, a version of the edit-a-thon, which also originated here in the New York City chapter. Uh, and it, it, except it focuses on translating uh, uh, entries, which, which, I, I, which, it, which, which, I, which offers, I think, a, a lot of, uh, an easy open door for people who feel like, oh, I, they don't know enough or they don't have enough to contribute to Wikipedia. But a lot of people have access to different languages. Or, or even if they don't, they could still you know, enable the translation for others in the room, yes. uh, which, is, which is really great. And, uh, so one of the features of LaGuardia Community College is that about uh, 125 languages are so, spoken. Uh, so this is why, you know, the question is why would you want to do a translate-a-thon instead of an edit-a-thon? And one of the reasons was that we wanted our students to feel that they could con contribute as, you know, so maybe they're not experts in a particular area, but they are experts in their own language. And so, uh, you know, with a little bit of choosing, you can find articles that are simple for them to, uh, it, what I mean simple in the sense of like, in, you know, not very long so that they can translate them in, you know, an hour an hour and a half. Um, and one thing that we learned uh, that was very interesting was how English-centered our, our events were. Uh, even when we were putting together our posters and things like that, all of them were originally in English. And then, you know, one of the uh, creators said, hey, why don't we invite them in their own language? And we had to, like, you know, ask people to help us translate uh, the all of the uh, the flyers and so on and so forth, but that really helped a lot because it felt like it was not just ask them asking them to translate from English to their own language, but actually they could also, you know, use from their own language. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people told me how much they appreciated seeing that, you know, a sign for an event in their language, and and they that really that really made them feel a welcome and and truly invited. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. the translate thons are very useful for Wikipedia, but also they're very useful for the people who are actually doing them. We, we learn, I've learned, you know, uh, in organizing these. And obviously we're not doing them because of the pandemic, but we're going to go back to doing them because, you know, it requires a lot of people in one room. And the, I don't think the school is quite ready to do that yet. But if you're interested, you know, take a look. We'll, we'll add links to, to our event pages. You'll, yeah. you'll see how much you know, planning that you can do, how much you can offer to participants to get things going. Um, and you can, and don't feel af afraid to start small with just one room and a few people, you know, yep. that's how it grows, right? Oh, and only one tip. At the end, ha always have a cake. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. I'm, I'm Dan. Um, I'm not sure when those empanadas get here, but there's food left over from breakfast if everybody, anybody's like starving. Five minutes, okay, well, there you go. Um, cool, so I'm Dan. I work for a Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, I've been there for 10 years. Uh, I wasn't born a data nerd, but I've become a data nerd uh, over the last 10 years. And I just wanted to tell you all a little bit about what I do because I'm gonna hopefully come to these meet meetups a lot more often, uh, I live like in the New York area, and uh, just invite you to like step into my little weird data niche and uh, think about this stuff with me. So uh, yeah, so data engineers at Wikimedia Foundation deal with an influx of data from 
uh, web requests uh, to the different Wikimedia projects, like people clicking around uh, reading articles, to people editing and how they edit, uh, to the content itself and like publishing that back out. So um, we sort of take that fire hose of, of data, streams of data coming in, we package it into different data sets or uh, dashboards or whatever we, whatever people want and, and publish it out. So uh, some examples are Wikistats, which is stats.wikimedia.org. There's like a bunch of uh, stats there. There's uh, dumps, so that's like a full like content dumps as XML files that you can like download and do cool stuff with. A uh, quick example about what somebody that I just found out uh, did with that. So they look at all the dumps and they train machine learning models to identify similar users. So a person might be editing under multiple names. That's totally fine sometimes, but sometimes they might be using that as sock puppeting and so, uh, or other uh, nefarious purposes. And so machine learning can help us sort of like identify those things and, and th dumps is like the input data to that, to that kind of training. Um, and a problem with that is that dumps takes, you know, something like 20 days or something to be published every month. And so it's a bit slow. Uh, and for a long time, I've been trying to build technical infrastructure to make that better. And this year, I think I can start working on that on the project of making that be published in about a day, hopefully. Uh, so I'm going to start that soon. And that's the kind of work that I do. Uh, and um, yeah, in, in doing all this, like we're sort of building all these uh, big data processing frameworks, you know, clusters, all, all this kind of stuff. And a lot of it is internal to Wikimedia Foundation, um, but we're hoping that what we learn is useful uh, to, to run kind of community, um, community data pipelines. Like if, if folks from, uh, from have an interest in a specific piece of data or a data set, they can just tell us and we can run it for them. Or uh, also like content data, like during the COVID pandemic uh, early days, there was a lot of demand for pulling data, aggregating, cleaning, publishing, and there wasn't a lot of support at all for that kind of infrastructure in the, in the projects themselves. And so we hope that we can bring some of this data engineering that we're doing inside, outside, um, on the cloud, uh, VPS uh, system and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of the stuff that I think about all the time. And if you're interested in any of that, uh, come find me at one of these things and talk to me or come find like the data engineering team on IRC. We're still on IRC, uh, Wikimedia-Analytics and or like the mailing list or anywhere. Uh, yeah, thanks. Folks uh, doing a part. Okay, that's okay. And now we'll have a lighting talk on the Department of Fun. Oh, so Department of Fun, yeah? Huh? Is that right? <laughs> I hope it's right. Anyway. Yes. There you go. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, we're not actually the Department of Fun, but well, there is there is there is a uh, there is a Wikimedia uh, pro a Wiki project called the Department of Fun. Uh, I just found out about it a few weeks ago. And I'm trying to uh, become the leader of the Department of Fun. Um, I was informed by an editor that there are no leaders in wiki projects, uh, but in the sense of fun, I'm still going to campaign. So uh, today, I want to do a reading, a dramatic reading of a page with uh, my associate here. Here we go, everybody. <sighs> This is the Wikipedia page. What? Sorry. Yes. Great. Uh, this will be under our time. This is a Wikipedia page for publicity stunt. In marketing, a publicity stunt is a planned event designed to attract the public's attention to the event's organizers or their cause. Publicity stunts can be professionally organized or set up by amateurs. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> Such events are frequently utilized by advertisers and by celebrities, who notably include athletes and politicians. Organizations 
sometimes seek publicity by staging newsworthy events that attract media coverage. They can be in the form of groundbreakings, world record attempts, dedications, press conferences, or organized protests. By staging and managing the event, the organization attempts to gain some control over what is reported in the media. Successful publicity stunts have news value, offer photo, video, and soundbite opportunities, and are arranged primarily for media coverage. <laughs> it can be difficult for organiz <laughs> planking, really? <Yep. laughs> it can be difficult for organizations to design successful publicity stunts that highlight the message instead of burying it. For example, it, ta it makes sense for a pizza company to bake the world's largest pizza, but it would not make sense for the, y the YMCA to sponsor that same event. The importance of publicity stunts is for generating news, interest, and awareness for the concept, product, or service being marketed. Two more paragraphs, everybody. Notable publicity stunts, J.P. Morgan and Ringling Brothers. In the year 1933, during the congressional hearings of J.P. Morgan's role in the financial crash, an American Senator, Carter Glass, remarked that the proceedings had turned into a circus. The Ringling Brothers company were in town that time. They interpreted Senator Glass's remarks as an invitation and asked their press agent to place a dwarf, Leah Graff, Sorry, I only know one car trick. This is going to be it, everybody. <laughs> on Morgan's lap during one of the hearings, while it surprised Morgan and infuriated Senator Glass, it got loads of publicity for Ringling Brothers. And luckily, it's the last time you're going to see that trick. <laughs> <laughs> Calendar Girls. In 1999, a group of 11 women of the Women's Institute in Yorkshire, UK, stripped for a calendar to raise money for charity. The calendar release featured the calendar release featured the women posing nude, obscured by baked goods and flower arrangements, with 800,000 copies sold worldwide. This stunt shocked people in those times and inspired the hit drama comedy Calendar Girls. This has been the Wikipedia page for publicity stunt. Thanks, everybody. Do you want to go and then, and then we go time? One minute, minute left. Yeah, okay. 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 We need to sign off. Thanks, everyone. Uh, this has been the live portion of our lightning talks. We're going to continue our lightning talks uh, in private, so you will not know our, <laughs> our great lightning talks that are coming up. But uh, well, goodbye from the Wiki World's Fair. Hope to see you here in, uh, again. And hopefully, we'll have. Uh, I want to have a big Wiki World's Fair in 2025 for the 400th anniversary of New York City. I hope you have Wikimedia here properly. Whoa. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>